Whether you call it Old Glory, the Stars and Stripes, the Star Spangled Banner, or the Red, White, and Blue, the United States flag is much, much more than just a pretty piece of fabric. Because it represents our living nation, the flag is a living symbol of our country. You'll see it waving proudly outside homes and businesses, schools and offices, in cities and towns all across America, not just on June 14th, but all year long. The U.S. flag is available in a variety of different materials. Polyester cotton blends are often used for display indoors, but it's also considered appropriate to fly them outdoors in good weather. Many people who want to display the flag indoors will choose a poly cotton blend as a lower cost alternative to a pure cotton flag. While cotton is a traditional flag material with a very attractive drape, it tends to be expensive. Cotton is also heavy and it's not as durable as other flag fabrics, which is why cotton flags are intended mainly for decorative and ceremonial purposes, not for outdoor display. Nylon is intended mainly for outdoor display purposes. It's lightweight, durable, weatherproof, and easy to clean. And unlike heavier materials, nylon flags will fly in the slightest breeze. They also dry quickly, and they resist fading better than poly cotton flags do. You should also know that flags are made with one of two different flagpole attachment methods. Some flags have a header with metal grommets that you attach to clips on a halyard rope or on the flagpole itself. And others have a sleeve sewn into the hoist edge, that is, the edge of the flag that's next to the pole for the pole to fit through. Now that you know more about flags, let's look at flag poles. Now, the two most common flagpole variations for residential flag flying are wall-mounted and in-ground. Now, most homeowners who want to display the flag outdoors will choose wall-mounted flagpoles, but some will opt for in-ground varieties. Now, a wall-mounted flagpole has a bracket that's designed to be attached with screws to a porch column, window frame, or balcony railing. Now, this type of flagpole is most often five or six feet long, though occasionally you'll see other sizes. Usually, a five-foot pole will have a two-foot by three-foot or two-and-a-half by four-foot flag, while a six-foot pole will have a three-foot by five-foot flag. A relatively new variation of this type of flagpole has either special rings or a rotating sleeve designed to keep the flag from wrapping around the pole. Now let's look at in-ground flagpoles. Some in-ground poles are designed to be permanently installed in the ground, while others have a permanent base and a telescoping pole that can be removed and stored. The most popular in-ground flagpole sizes for home use are between 15 and 25 feet high. Some schools and businesses use taller poles, which require bigger flags. As a rule of thumb, the length of the flag should be one-fourth to one-third the length of the flagpole. So, for example, a three-foot by five-foot flag would be suitable for a 15-foot or 18-foot flagpole. An appropriate size flag for a 20-foot pole would be either three feet by five feet or four by six. Okay, let's move on to flag etiquette. The advisory standard for flag etiquette is the U.S. Flag Code adopted by Congress in 1942. There are no penalties for displaying the flag incorrectly, but since the U.S. flag is a living symbol of our country, it's important to always display and care for the flag properly and respectfully. Let's start with display considerations. The flag should always be flown right side up. It should never be displayed upside down, except, as the flag code states, as a signal of dire distress in instances of extreme danger to life or property. If you want to display the flag 24 hours a day, a nice way to lend a patriotic effect to homes and businesses, it's important to illuminate it at night so that the stars and stripes are visible from a reasonable distance. Often, a flag displayed on a porch with a wall-mounted flagpole will be sufficiently lit by a nearby porch light or street light. If not, you need a dedicated light. It's appropriate to fly the flag in inclement weather only if it's made of a weatherproof material, such as nylon. Otherwise, the flag should be lowered, properly folded, and taken indoors for storage during bad weather. We'll show you the proper folding technique later in this segment. When flying the U.S. flag along with your state flag, it's appropriate to fly them on the same flagpole as long as the U.S. flag is topmost. You should never place another flag above the U.S. flag. It's also appropriate to fly them on separate adjacent poles of the same height. Now, in that case, the U.S. flag should have the position of honor, which is on the flag's own right. 
Flags of other nations should never be flown on the same flagpole as the U.S. flag. They should be flown from separate flagpoles of the same height, and the flags should all be about the same size. Here again, the U.S. flag should have the position of honor on its own right. Now, if you're displaying the flag on a wall, you can suspend it either horizontally or vertically. Either way, the union, that is the end with the stars, needs to be at the top and to the flag's own right. Another special display consideration is flying the flag at half-staff. Now, this is done by proclamation of the president or your state governor upon the death of a government official or other principal figure to respect their memory. It's also done on certain holidays, including Peace Officers Memorial Day, Memorial Day, Patriot Day, and Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Now, let's move on to some important flag care tips, beginning with how to fold the flag correctly. Since the flag should never touch the ground, the folding process usually requires two people. Begin by holding the flag horizontally at waist height, then fold it in half lengthwise two times. The union should be on top. Next, the person at the union end holds the flag while the person at the striped end makes a triangular fold and keeps folding in triangles until the flag is in a square shape. Fold the square down into a triangle and tuck the folds inside. Always store the flag in a clean, dry place away from cleaning products and other harsh chemicals. Like anything else, flags can get dirty and you shouldn't fly a dirty flag. Indoor flags should be dry clean when they get dirty, but most nylon flags can be safely wiped clean or hand washed with a mild detergent. Don't put them in the washing machine. Be sure to rinse thoroughly and never store the flag until it's completely dry. If you were to fold a wet flag, it could develop permanent creases. Never fly a torn, tattered, frayed, or noticeably faded flag. If a flag is damaged, it's okay to repair it with a needle and thread as long as the repair doesn't alter the flag's dimensions. A flag that can't be appropriately repaired should be retired. Don't dispose of it in the garbage. Instead, the flag code states that it should be destroyed in a dignified way, preferably by burning. Many organizations, including Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops, VFW chapters, and the American Legion posts, collect old flags and dispose of them at special burning ceremonies as a community service. It's also appropriate for individuals or families to conduct their own flag retirement ceremonies, which can be a valuable learning experience for children in particular. Some suggestions for flag retirement ceremonies may be found on the website of the National Flag Foundation. What we've talked about here isn't all there is to flag etiquette. One great place to learn more would be the website I mentioned a moment ago for the National Flag Foundation. We use this site as a resource for much of the information in this segment. And by the way, you can also find official half-staffing announcements on this site.